Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. You might hear some background noise. My son's here with me, so um today is Saturday. It is August the third, and we're talking about the waxing crescent moon phase. So we're in the phase right after the moon, new moon of the intentions of planning and really getting things out there. Coming up, um, being expressive, showing up to others, um, kind of connecting with people, not so much right now, but being open to connecting with people, you know, and um, what else? Today is Saturday. It's also ruled by Saturn. So this is um, talking about time and discipline and karma and structures and so we're looking a lot of at a lot of that um, for ourselves right now. I do. I took some notes again, so I'm gonna be reading those to you guys about the astrology, and I'm gonna go through it really quickly. It's been a crazy day. My friend came down from Austin to visit me, and we went to the creek, went to the park. And, you know, I'll talk about what happened in the midst of sharing this astrology. So, uh, this is for the next three days. So, the third through the sixth, we have the moon in Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. So, this is, we're focused on details, on clearing, focused on getting balance, and focused on going deep within so that um, what we present to others can be really heartfelt, really truthful, really deep down within ourselves, you know, and letting that come out to everyone. So let's see, today we have the moon north sextile the north node, the moon square Jupiter, we have the moon trine, what is this? Pluto and Saturn, and the moon in a opposition to let me put this here, in opposition to Neptune. So this is making sure that our wants and needs are moving along with what it is that we are destined for, especially in things of um, cancer. So this is our um, our home life, our roots, our foundations, our security, you know, also in, in what that is going to look like for the future for us. Um, the moon square Jupiter, this could Thing like some kind of conflict on expanding, on letting go, having issues in letting go, accepting our personal beliefs or others accepting our personal beliefs, uh, particularly like in our home relationships and things like that. For sure, be careful. So um, then we have the moon trying to Pluto and Saturn. So this is... trying Pluto and Saturn this is kind of us taking the easy way out uh acknowledging how it is that we feel and ending all ways of doing things <laughs> it's car alarm all ways of um of doing things old structures of this is death and rebirth and transformations and speaking of this we were driving down the street and as we were driving, she was just like, oh my goodness, there's a man hanging out there. And I was like, what? You don't know what you're talking about. So I turned the car around and a guy seemed fit that this morning will be best for this to be his last day on earth. So he killed himself. He threw, I, I don't know if he threw himself over, but he was hanging from his balcony and we could see it from the street in the apartments that are like two apartments down from us. There's the neighborhood from us. So this energy, this also makes me think of Pluto, Sextile, and Neptune, right? So this is really being caught up in the illusions and in that um, just really ending those illusions, uh, really caught up under um, needing to really align our spirituality in regards to where it is we're moving into, you know, and I know uh, a lot of things can just be hard to accept. I'm, I'm personally not one of uh, advocating suicide. I don't know anyone who is, but um, sometimes there is no, we don't see no other way. Sometimes things are just 
the energy has been crazy. A lot of things have been going on. So with that, um, I, we, I just said a prayer and lit a candle for him and hoping that things go well for him and his family. Although we have some energy coming up where that might not be the case, but let's continue for our sake. So we have moon opposite Neptune. So this is like very elu illusory happenings. Um, not really seeing things clearly uh, of accomplishing our wants and needs, um, really getting to the root of our desires. A lot of, this can be like a lot of tech technical difficulties, really. You know, uh, trying to keep, trying to get things accomplished. Or this can even be a very exasperated type of energy. You know, when moon, when the moon and Neptune come together, the moon also represents illusions, illusions that come to light in the dark, you know. So uh, that can speak of that really either coming out and seeing what we need to do to move on from that or just maybe even being stuck in that. And they say it is said that during a moon during a moon in Neptune opposition that it's not a good time to get a reading. But I personally think it's a great time anytime to get a reading simply because um, the people who give you your readings they do a lot of work when it comes to making sure their energy field is clear in order to serve you. So next tomorrow we have a uh, moon and Chiron opposition. So we might have some wounds coming up in regards to us healing uh, things and surra surrounding either the masculine or our identity, you know, or our personality, our sense of self. So that may be something that we need to acknowledge tomorrow. We also have a king come um, to the moon in Uranus. So we need to integrate whatever changes it is that needs to happen for ourselves so that we can fully... Um, move into that healing space along move into that healing space and really embrace this moon sextile to Venus and the sun. You know, this allow us, this energy allows us to come from a loving place in anything that really comes up for us here. So um on the fifth we have two sextiles of the moon between Jupiter and Mars. All right, so this is really expanding on our beliefs, you know, really aligning with what it is that we feel, you know, taking action towards this. This is a need to put effort. So this isn't just going to automatically happen. We're going to have to put some effort to this, you know, and the moon is now going to be at a square to Saturn and Pluto. So this can cause a lot of friction in the changes that have happened, you know, in how it is that we feel, um, what it is that we need, what it is that we want, even how it is that we think, you know, um, our foundations, our security, our roots, our family, our relationships, all of that, that can, it can bring an upheaval in what needs to be rectified in this area, you know, and then the moon will be at a square to the North Node and Mercury. So, um, our minds this day on the 5th, which is Monday, aren't really going to be aligned with how it is that we feel along with where it is that we're going, you know. So this is going to be in Libra. So we're going to be needing to find balance. We are going to need to be going over whatever contracts we have created up, even if it's something we haven't signed, whatever verbal contracts we have made Um you know, dealing with our relationships, dealing with our partners, um, dealing with what the rules are and really acknowledging them. Um, and also working together, allowing what it, where it is that we are to work together with the people around us who really help us through that energy because Libra is all about balance. I'm not saying that the emotional energy is not going to be present it is it is just a need to stop and think you know because that is Libra is the air sign and that's what's all about the mind and the work the a lot of what needs to be done to bring things to life <clears throat> so finally on the sixth we only have 
two aspects that day, and this is Tuesday, and we have moon opposition of Uranus, so things can be going really crazy this day, you know, a lot of random happenings may be going on, um, this can bring up a need for change in something, this can bring up a desire to be more eccentric in how it is that we express ourselves from a heart-based level you know um and it's also a moon king comes chiron so we may need to bring in all the healing that we've done up until this point surrounding ourselves into our emotions so that we can really feel at home because this will be in scorpio you know so this will be aligning these things with our intimate relationships being very devoted to this you know moving into that transformation um really uh taking a look at our our ancestry and the karma that it carries with us and really letting that healing become part of us now that we are here you know and um this may also have a need to deal with any type of family secrets or any type of manipulation that has gone on between uh, relationships in the family that we not may we may not have been aware of up until this point that has affected us on a personal level and allowing us to be able to heal through this by knowing this and that can possibly be the uh, changes that happens because Uranus is a Taurus and this is of the things that we have. Now, Taurus doesn't only speak of physical possessions. It also speaks of the things that we have within, the things that uh, manifest from without, uh, from within, outside of ourselves, you know. So, I have no idea what any of this means for you guys. Um, but take some time with that to see where, what it brings to you, for you. So my energy, I couldn't record the video earlier because my energy was really all over the place, you guys. Like, it was, but it's better. I'm grounded. I've eaten. I also hadn't eaten since when that happened. So I was on empty and I was just feeling all of the energy. But I'm here with you guys and I am pulling these cards for the next three days. So let's see what spirit has for us. Um, we're going to do the regular four card pull. I am going to use the Work Your Light Oracle, the Astrology Deck, um, the Children, the Animal Cards, the Spirit Animal Cards, and I'll probably go back to using the Goddess Deck today because it's a little bit lighter and we need some lightness, I think. What you think? I do. <laughs> oh. Take a moment to grow. And please excuse any background noise. Rashad's in there having fun with my friend. <laughs> She's trying to keep him in his in his space while I do this. Every time I use these goddess set cards and I'm sitting outside and it's a little sticky, they are always so difficult to shovel. Shovel. <laughs> shovel. <gasps> okay, that's it. And we're going to shuffle these astrology cards. I just want to have everything going, everything ready and prepared for us so that we do not. Well, you know, time is of the essence. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So today I also found out that Saturdays are ruled by Oshun, particularly in the Santeria tradition. If you know anything about that, it is the day of death and ancestors. So, which speaks a lot of um, Saturn. The Saturn speaks of karma and It can also speak of building new things um, and even letting go, not so much the same as Scorpio, Pluto, but very similar. It's a very, still a very, like a heavy energy, you know. Okay, so let's get this going. Okay, so the first card we got today is mirror what is triggering you. So what are the things that have been coming up for you today over the next three days? Pay attention to these things. What is making you feel uncomfortable? You know, what is uh, really making you or provoking something within you that you don't want to see? Or what is inspiring you? You know, because being triggered isn't just a negative thing. It can also be of the positive. There could be somebody that you're seeing that you're looking up to and it's like, oh, you know, I need to do that too. You know, but I'm really thinking it's something of the negative or something not really serving us on a higher level simply because we got the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups kind of speaks of spirit handing us something and we're not paying attention to it because we're so... We so gone off of the Three of Cups energy, having so much fun, just really caught up in everything. And now all of a sudden it seems boring or just really over overturned with all the energy that we just invested. But it's like, well, if you just look to yourself, you could embrace this fourth cup and drink from it as well and see what else is there for you you know um instead of being so disappointed instead of being so discontent with where it is that you are right now and this can speak of family this is the eighth house so scorpio this may be happening on um not until the sixth the last day of the white and crescent movement everything kind of or it may be a build-up you know because this is where we are right now and this is speaking of our intimate relationships, of our transformations and our rebirths, things dying off so that we can really come into a new place of being. You know, what is triggering us to make this transformation? What have we, what has disappointed us and where it is that we are that has um, triggered this transformation? You know, what emotions have come up? go there, see them, and see what they're tied to, follow them, you know, so that you can get to the root of it and remove it and, you know, really let go of that karma, whatever that is for you. Or maybe there's something in an intimate relationship going on right now that you you thought that something was it and it's not. And that is really up for you to decide, up to decide because I'm really not the type of person to be like, oh, well, they ain't treating you well, just leave them. I'm really, I really believe in working through things, seeing where you are, what can be, where it is that you can show up differently in order for them to show up differently, because that makes space, if that is something for you. So take some time with that over these next couple of days and see where it is that this disappointment is coming from. So that you can fully let go of it. And if it is something that is triggering you in a positive way, because the Four of Cups can represent understanding that this, pay, this phase is passing, even though it's downtime, you know, it can allow you and assist you in releasing whatever it is that is coming up for you um, in this whole karmic state, in this whole 
um, you know, these intimate relationships. It could even be something that is taboo to the family. And for you, it is regular. It's normal. And that could be triggering you in some kind of way that is either making you want to hide, you know, or um, making you feel like, you know what, I'm finished. Speak my mind. <laughs> you know, it, it can go many ways. So we're coming to another grandmother of Jesus. We're laying new foundations for ourselves, but also learning to love people unconditionally for who it is that they are. Understanding that everything has its its meaning, its way, its place, you know, and allowing the divine plan to really go forward, excuse me, and allowing things to simply happen and allowing the magic to come through, allowing our inner to become our outer, you know, letting that change from within, being that almighty alchemist you know, transforming the energies in us so that they can serve us on a a day-to-day, on a life level, you know, and this can be calling for new partnerships, new relationships. This can be called in the partnerships and relationships that you have, the contracts that you have, um, working things out with your, with your relationships, with your partners, um, you know, abiding more by the rules. And the rules could mean so many different things depending on what your situation is. You know, so, um, and maybe you also need to work with other people in laying these foundations. You know, uh, the power power of many. Thing, doing things with others makes it stronger. It makes things, it makes things faster, which not is not always a good thing. But for sure, it makes things um, stronger and more la- long lasting, right? So, and not that is not to say that doing things on your own does not bring lasting effect. But let's say we look at this from a divine feminine and a divine masculine aspect. Yes. As a woman, the divine feminine, you can do stuff on your own. You can get it done. But when you bring that divine masculine in, that man, it solidifies something. It's like his energy penetrates it down into the ground and allows it to be steady, allows it to move forward, allows it to grow unwaveringly because the divine masculine is linear. You know, it brings that grounding. So that is just an example in that. So the advice is to listen to your intuition. This is a great gathering. Listen to your intuition. Um, Know that it's all coming together and uh, get get with your soul tribe if needed to. Um, You know, let everything come down that must. This is oppression. It's also the tower card in the um, original tarot deck. Right. So this is uh, knowing that people have other agendas. Right. Um, That don't necessarily serve you. But these things pass in that it is meant to um, the tower is is Scorpio is a Scorpio card. The endings and the beginnings, the the transformations, the death and the rebirth. Right. The oppression. Um, and come out of that. You are not an oppressed being. We are not oppressed beings. That is all an illusion. Um, we. That is why there are so many of us here sharing what it is that we've been through and come through because it is possible to move beyond wherever it is that you are, you know, and it's necessary to understand that nothing is finite. When things are no longer working for us, they will come undone. You know, and in in that, with that, we got the, what is this? This is the waning crescent moon. And the waning crescent is right before the, the new moon. So this is asking us to release. It's asking us to let go, to go into surrender, to heal. Um, heal through your tribe. Uh, listen to your intuitive downloads that are coming through. What is it that you need to do for yourself? let things in and let them go whatever it is that is no longer 
in your favor, that is not giving you those desired results, that is not allowing you to fully be in the moment and be present. It's time to move through that and let that go. So the message that we have from this moon is to do not dim to fit in. Shine your light. Be who it is that you are. Go. Go by learning. Go by doing. Create. Don't stop. You know, um, it's okay that this is new. It's everything. Something's always new to us. But by not having experience, you gain experience because you choose to in, in, you choose to put yourself into things that give you that knowledge it is that you need. You go by the learn. You, you learn by the going. You learn by the doing. That is so important. You know, and this is bringing us to a very stable place. You know, it, where we're going, what we're doing is bringing us the stability, the fourth house, the foundation, the roots. It is allowing us to build new roots if we are letting go. Because all this reading has been about letting go and releasing. Even the astrology has been about the letting go and the releasing and accepting that. And integrating what needs to what has been learned, you know, so also this can also speak of um, creating something new with the family, you know, shine your light, be who you are, love them unconditionally, you know, and in that don't be afraid to be who it is that you are with around them, with them, within that family unit, you know, and um, do whatever it is that you need to do so that you can Build the foundations and stability it is that you need in order to move forward in life. So, last but not least, we have the animal card today for, for this moon phase, and it's the crow. Believe in the magic. No, we really have to come into a place of trusting that what happened earlier with me and my friend in a car, this speaks a lot to that for me. Trusting that no matter where it is that we are, that everything is going to be okay. Knowing that even in the midst of the stuff that don't seem right, that there is still someone working for us behind the scenes. It is just a matter of getting through what it is we can't see through right at the moment and believing that things are magical and that things can turn themselves around and really manifest miracles in a way that you never imagined you know it is a, a point of sticking around and allowing things to become what they should you know even if that means letting go of what everything is right here that means believing that things can that speaking up that showing up and being who you are can magically change everything you know that Creating and building and learning can bring you the stability that you're desiring, you know, and when we do this, I know that just interacting with people, things are always so, especially when we're on the right path and we're listening to ourselves, things become so synchronistic, things become so readily available to us, and sometimes we do have to work for it, like things do not come without effort, ever, but it is a matter of the doing, the going and the believing. So, you guys, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that it speaks to you, and I hope that you can take this for the next three days, and that it can bring some insight to what comes up for you. I will see you on, let me check the dates. All right, I'll see you on Wednesday, because that'll be the last, the first quarter moon, um, and we will be talking about something different because things will have passed. All right. I will see you soon. Y'all have a wonderful weekend and beginning of the week. Bye.